Welcome back! In today's tutorial I'll show you how to do the dialogue system on the screen right now. I will go over the system itself and the animations that you can see. Ok so open up a new Unity project and import any sprites you wish to have. I just have a background and a dialogue bubble. Now this will be required for any animations you want to add but it's not necessary. Within package manager select here and select Unity registry. I'm going to search a thing called Text Mesh Pro. All you have to do is select on it and install it. After it's installed Click on Window, Text Mesh Pro, and import TMP Essential Resources. Press Import. The reason we're installing this is to have more control over our text. This isn't necessarily required, but it's useful to have. Then right click on your hierarchy and press UY, Canvas. Before we do anything, let's set up our canvas. I like to have mine overlay over the camera, so I'm going to select Overlay Camera and drag my camera in. Then on the UI Scale mode, make sure you select Scale with Screen Size. This is so that anyone who plays your game can see the canvas properly and not kind of altered. Once you have your canvas set up, you can right click, press UI and Text Mesh Pro becomes an option. Scale this to be the right size for your dialog box. If you can't currently see this like I can, click on your canvas and change the order in the layer. In here I will just type something like hello so I can see it. I'll change the colours around and I'll play around with it to get the look that I want. After playing around with it, make sure there's actually nothing in there. At this point we can start making our script and make our controller, so call this dialog controller. Press add component, dialog controller, new script, and create an add. Then open it up in Visual Studio. While in Visual Studio there's a few things we need to do. First of all we need to add the TMP Pro stuff that we just imported, so type in using TMP Pro at the top. Then let's make some parameters. First of all we want to get reference to the text that we just created, so create a public text mesh pro GUI and I will call it dialog text. Then make a public string array called sentences. The reason we're creating an array is so that we can have multiple sentences in our dialog. Then make a reference to the index which will be just an int. And set it to zero to be the default. A few more parameters left to go, we want to make the speed for our text, so make a public float called dialog speed. At this point this will do, but later on when I go through the animations there's a few things we're going to have to add. To start we'll make some changes in the update. Now in this particular tutorial I want my dialogue to come up every time I press space, so let's check if any input is pressed in. So once again just do a simple if statement and check for the input of whatever key you want. In my case this will be space. Within this if statement we want to call the sentence function. Now this doesn't exist yet so let's create it. We'll start by creating a coroutine. The way what you do this is you create an I enumerator and then call it whatever you want. In my case it will just be right sentence. Now because I want my dialogue to appear smoothly on the screen, we'll start by creating a for each loop. In here we'll make a reference to the character and we'll make this go into the sentences array that we just created. Then remember this is an array so we've got to make reference to the index which will be the index of the private int we made up there. Then we want to convert it to a character array, so just type to chart array. Now make sure to add the brackets as this is a function. Within this, create it as a loop. Now in this for each loop we want to add a character from our sentences array to this word. To do this it's pretty simple, we'll make a reference to our dialog text, now make sure to write dot text because that's what we're doing, and we will add a character every time we call this, like such. Finally to make this function properly, we'll make a yield return new, wait for seconds, and then we will do the dialog speed, which is the speed parameter that we set up there. At this point we're nearly done, but there's a few more things we need to do. Let's start by making a new function called next sentence. Within here we will check if the index has reached the maximum length. To do this type an index smaller than or equal to, then we get our array which in my case is called sentences, and we'll get the length. Now it's really important that you do minus one because arrays tend to include a zero and we don't really need that. In here we will set the dialogues text, once again dot text, to equal nothing. And finally we will start this coroutine. So to start a coroutine just type in start coroutine, some brackets and then the name of your coroutine, which in my case is write sentences. Make sure to include those brackets in there as well because it acts as a function. Now to finish it off all we need to do is call the next sentence. And that is it, let's go into Unity and set it up. Whoops, I almost forgot, before we can actually make this work, we actually need to make a reference to the index increasing. So within the I enumerator or the coroutine, make sure you do index plus plus. So there's a few things we need to set up. On the dialog controller, drag in your text and set the speed to something small, like 0.05 will do. In sentences, select how many sentences you want, so I'll just have three, press enter and type your sentences in. After you have your sentences, just press play. You'll notice pressing space will draw the sentence on. 
Pressing space again, we'll move on to the next one, and to the last one. Now it's time to add some animations and make it fully loop. So at this point, to add animations, make sure you have some sort of dialog box. In my case, it's just this. Pr then press window, animation, and the animation bar, and go down below here. Press create, and let's create some new animations. First of all, we will make an entry state. On my entry state, I want my dialog to not be visible, and then at 0.5, maybe increase to 111, like so. Select this, create a new clip, and let's make an exit now. The exit will be really similar. On 0.5, I'm just going to make it decrease to zero. Now let's create an idle animation. So select create new clip and call it idle. In this case, I'm just going to add the property of the scale. Finally, we want an invisible state, so make an invisible animation. And in this case, we'll just set the size to be zero. Like so. Now let's set up our animations. So this will be really simple. Click window, animation, and the animator. And then I've got it at the top here. We have all these different states, but let's create two parameters. First one will be a trigger, and this will be exit. And the next will also be a trigger, enter. So let's join this up. First of all, right click on the entry, press set default state, and set it to the invisible state. Then we want the entry, so just make a transition to the entry then a transition to the idle, a transition to the exit, and finally an actual transition to the exit like so. Now feel free to play around with these transition settings, I'm just going to leave it like so for now. On this transition from the entry to the idle, press this little condition and select enter. And then from the idle to the exit, select this and press exit. Now that we've got this set up, let's go back into Visual Studio and change some parts of our code. In Visual Studio, first of all, we will need to make a reference to the animator we just created. So create a public animator, and call it dialog animator. We'll also make a private boolean on whether to start the animation or not. So I'm going to call this start dialog. And to start off, I'm going to set it to true. I just realized we can delete the void start as well. This isn't really necessary. The first change will happen in the update. First of all, let's check if this start dialog is true. So type in if and then start dialog and make a bracket. At this point, also make an else like so. Let's drag the sentence into here. And then what if it is the start? Well, we want to trigger the animation that we created, aka the entry animation. So select your dialog animator, press dot and type in set trigger as the trigger was the parameter we made, and then the name of it, which in our case was enter. Also really important, make sure to set start dialog to equal false here, as we don't want to play this animation over and over again. Now I write sentence can stay exactly the same, but a few changes will need to be made to the next sentence. In here, I'll make an else statement like so. Now the reason I'm doing this is if the index reaches the end, I want my animation to exit. So once again, we can just copy over this set trigger into here and set this to be exit as that was the name that we set in there. We can also copy the dialog text as we want to clear it completely before we exit. I'm going to have the index reset to zero. Now this isn't necessary, but I'm going to have it like this so my dialog can loop essentially. Finally, I'm going to set the start dialog to equal true. Now, once again, this isn't necessarily required. You could just keep it to these two lines up here. But as I said, I want my dialog to loop. That's why I'm adding the index equals zero and start dialog equals true. And that is it. Let's get out of Visual Studio. And there's a few couple changes we need to make in Unity. The first change is actually for our animations. First of all, select the entry and make sure it doesn't loop and do the same for the exit. The idle and the invisible can loop, however. And the last thing you need to do is select your dialog controller and drag it in your dialog. Actually, I realized I made a mistake. Click on this entry to idle and actually delete this here. We actually need this from the invisible to the entry. My bad. Now, if we press play, everything should work fine. So now if we press play, everything should work fine. Pressing space will bring up the animation. Pressing space again will draw the text. And then we can loop through it essentially. And then finally, when we get to the end, pressing space will close this animation like so. Once again, as I said, this is a looped system, so we can go through it again. This is very basic and you can definitely add more, such as play around with the animations and the art and the way the text draws on. But if you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you were to subscribe and leave a like. And I'll see you guys in the next Unity tutorial. Bye!